Hi guys, it's me, Alex. I hope you can hear me. So let's see if we're gonna have some viewers. Well, um, many of you know, we did not have class today. It's gonna be kind of awkward. I'm doing it on my um, pro, pro, little pro app here. So I might be kind of off center. Uh, you guys have to forgive me. But we're gonna talk today about should dispatcher know their market. So please, if anybody watching me, can you let me know if you can hear me very well? So let me see, let me see if I have anybody who is watching. So we're gonna talk about, um, please, can you just tell me if you, if you can hear me so we can continue. Knowing the market, and we when we are talking about the market, we're not talking about thread lines. So let's make it clear. Today, we're going to be talking about markets in USA. When I am saying markets, I mean production, manufacturing, where we grow stuff, agricultural markets, right? I am not talking about thread lines of the trucking industry. So thread lines, it's how much do they pay right now for driving, for reefer, how much do they pay for uh, flatbed, step that. But every dispatcher needs to know the markets of USA. So most of you, as my students, you receive uh, homework before the, even starting my class, right? And some of you are working on it. Let's see, I'm gonna just pull out on my phone the spreadsheet that each of you have to fill it out, right? Why is it important for you first to understand which state belongs to which zone and region. So let's first talk about the zones. We know that that is dividing zones by zero through nine. And of course, we are starting from what? We are starting from East Coast, right? It's kind of awkward to, <laughs> to see me off center, but it's okay. As long as we are learning something, right? We did not have class today, so we're gonna learn something new. So we are starting from East Coast, same as the time zones, right? So zero somewhere in Portland, New Hampshire, right? Then we go to Z1, Z2, Z3, we go to Z4, Z5, Z7, seven, seven, and we finish in California, Z9. So those are zones. We divide also USA by regions, right? And we can go into more detailed region, like for example, uh, New England region, Mid-Atlantic, Southeastern, Midwest, Southeast, Southwest, Northwest, right? Mountains. But usually we go East Coast. So we have Northeast, Southeast. Then we have Southwest on the bottom, right? We have Midwest, our strong Midwest. And of course we have mountains and West Coast Pacific, right? So those are our regions. So most of the dispatchers, first, you need to know the states. You need to know abbreviation of the states. Why is it important? Because it's gonna help you to make your postings more accurate and faster. Let's say you have truck in Oklahoma City and he only wants to stay on Midwest, but also he might go to Michigan, Ohio, and maybe he doesn't mind to go to Georgia. Well, if you know your zones, if you know your states and you know your regions, for example, if you post in, in that, you can do Oklahoma City, Z4, Z5, Z6, right? You chosen three zones which are belonging to Midwest. You add in Michigan, MI, Ohio, OH, and you get in Georgia, GA. How many times beginners, especially dispatchers who did not put their time into studying uh, at least basics of logistics, are misposting? So instead of Michigan, they're posting ME or they are posting MN. So please, abbreviation of the states are the must. This is like ABCs. You go to kindergarten, you know your ABC song, abbreviation of the states are the must. How many states are you going to be operating? 
Well, if you are interstate carrier who goes all over USA, you are operating in how many states? Let me see. How many states are we going to be operating? I want to see the comments. It has to be interactive live today because, guys, I'm on vacation. Of course, you're saving me because I'm kind of bored, you know. I'm workaholics. So if we are interstate going in all the states in USA, yes, that's correct. We're going to be participating in 48 states. But a lot of times, you're only going to be working with the carriers who stay in certain regions. So that's why you need to know your regions. If you have a carrier and when you're reaching out to him and you say, well, it's me, Ada, I am gonna be, I would love to be your best dispatcher ever. I really need to know the regions that you willing to drive and where you comfortable with, right? And let's say he's gonna tell you, well, I like to stay in Midwest. Are you going to verify with him? Is it the whole Midwest or the part of Midwest? Well, you should already know the knowledge, right? Which states belong to Midwest? So you're going to show that you understand what Midwest is. Then you're also going to have brokers. When you're getting set up, they like asking you, well, tell me, tell me, please, Celia, where you guys usually operate? Do you guys go to certain regions and you stay away from certain regions? Right there, you need to be able to make conversation. Because if you only stay on East Coast, Northeast, are you going to be talking about going to California? Are you going to be talking about going to Washington? So just simply knowing the basic of regions, the basic of, the basic of your state, you will you will already show that you have knowledge and that's what you need to show you need to show the knowledge of regions of the states of equipment to your broker to your future carrier and actually that's what's gonna give you confidence so let's skip this Everyone can learn the abbreviation of the states. Everybody can learn the region. Everybody can learn also the time zones, right? And in tracking, we only concentrate on what? Eastern time, central time, mountain time, and Pacific. Because we're not swimming to Hawaii. We're not swimming to Puerto Rico. Unfortunately, we're not swimming to Dominican where I am right now. So that is your basics. You learn that. Your apps like that, like Truck Stop, will show you thread lines. You can do the quick rate search and let's say, oh, what, what is a dry when a pain right now from going to Chicago to Memphis? For example, that, that has an option. It's in a tool, tool option. It's also going to show you the thread lines per month, right? So usually in the middle of the month, the rates are higher. When the month is closing, they're going to go lower. And many of you have seen that the rates went down drastically compared to the last year, even to compare it to the beginning of the year. So some of you are coming to dispatch in a tough market, but it's okay. As long as you understand what you need to learn. So let's go through understanding the market, understanding supply, demand, population, manufacturing, agriculture production, and all the things which each state has to offer. If I'm going to ask right now, for example, let's say, um, I don't know, Sam, Sam, uh, Sam or Nikki, I see that they're watching. Can you tell me where do we grow apples in USA? And usually people who have not been dealing with the freight or people who did not pay attention to those things, they're like, oh, we have apples everywhere, right? You go, to, I live in Illinois, we have apple farms, right? Around, I go and pick the apples. You go to Oklahoma, they have some apples, but you need to understand, now you are a logistics specialist. Is it enough apples growing in that state that they can export? That's what you need to understand. You have to concentrate on the numbers. So let's take commodity as apples. So where is the biggest production of apples in USA? 
Well, of course, it's going to be Washington, number one state, right? They even have it on a plate. They're going to have it in Oregon because of what? Of Yakima Valley. Then we have Michigan, right? We have upstate New York. And that's probably it for apples. So can we tell that each state has that one apple tree or maybe a few apple trees or some local farms which kind of <laughs> entertain your kids for apple picking? Yeah, we can say that. But for you now, as a logistics specialist, if you're going to be dealing with the reefers, you're going to know that if you want to hold reefers as a commodity, right? Now we're talking about commodity. So apple was a product when it was on a tree. They picked it. Somebody sold it. Now it's a commodity. We're going to put it on your truck and it's going to become cargo. So your cargo is going to come from those states as Washington, Oregon, upstate Michigan, upstate New York for apples. Let's switch the commodity. I don't know. Let's see. That's local USA market. Somebody's telling me New Jersey. Somebody's going to tell me, well, California. Well, yes, we do have also apples in uh, California. That's why you need to look at the data, agriculture data in each state for the export of certain produce. So you simply can Google what is California exports to other USA states. And for example, we talk about California. Well, California is one of the states which has uh, produce um, in depends on a drought, of course, season, season. But we have salad, we have grapes, we have oranges, we have, uh, we have apples, we have a lot of other things. On which data? On agriculture export, right? Then we can go, for example, to Arizona. Well, you can tell me, well, Arizona also exports a lot of cucumbers, salad, avocados. But let me ask you this. Is this comes from Arizona State or does it come from crossing the border in Nogales, Arizona? So this is a different thing. Now we're talking about export from different countries. In this case, this is Mexico. So that's why, yes. Arizona, in Nogales, Arizona, we pick up all those cucumbers, salads, we pick up avocados, we pick up mangoes, right? Same we do in where? In Laredo, Mexico. Same we do in McAllen. Same we do in San Diego. But that is not USA market, right? This is already coming abroad, in this case, from Mexico. Let's talk about Port Miami. Let's talk about Philadelphia port. Let's talk about all the ports in South Carolina or Maryland, right? Or whatever ports we have on East Coast. Same as talking about uh, ports on West Coast, starting with Seattle, Oregon, and going to Los Angeles and uh, all the San Diego ports. Now we're talking about export of produce from other countries. But today, I want to concentrate on you understanding how important it is to learn each state. So in this homework, I'm asking my students first to put all the states, making sure that they know that states belong into certain zones. For example, if I ask you, uh, Tennessee belongs to what zone? Well, you should automatically know this is a zone three, right? If I'm asking you about Wisconsin, well, it's zone five. If I'm asking you about Oklahoma, well, it's zone seven, right? And it goes on. It's very easy. We only have 48 states. It should not be that hard. And again, you can always print it out that little map from that, which is always there in a load board app, right? You go down and you have zones, you have uh, all the main cities, and also you have markets. So what does it mean by markets? That is helping you to memorize the biggest cities, right? So they are telling you, listen, you are new to logistics. We're going to help you out. We're going to put, and what they call it, the market key cities. So what does it mean? Well, that means 
that in each state, we have cities which have more production, more manufacturing, even more population, right? So if we have more people living there, if we have more distribution center, if we have more factories, if we have more agriculture farms, what does it mean? That means that state has way more to export. And that's where you want to be. That's where you want to deliver. Because you want to deliver to busy area and you want to pick up the load from that area. And you want kind of go from key city to key city. You don't want to start playing that game. Oh, you know what? Let me book this load because it pays $500 more somewhere in the middle of, I don't know, Wyoming, North Dakota, Utah, New Mexico. Well, that would not be smart, right? Because if there is not enough people living around that area, what are you going to pick up? That means you're going to be dead heading to the biggest key market city to pick up your load. So is that smart? No, it's not smart. We are talking about what, guys? We are talking about... Okay, so then we, of course, concentrating on population. Some of the students asking me again, Alex, why should I know the population? So let's see. If we are talking about population of New York City, right? We have 8.4 million people living in New York State. Let's compare it to Maine, 1.3 million. Why? You should not know the population. Well, you should. You are in a freight. You are in logistic. You are actually logistic specialist. You're not just a person who just posts in the trucks. You need to know the process. So if New York State has 8.5 million compared to the main, what's going to happen? That means that we are bringing more stuff to New York State to make sure that people have what? Food clothes, all the supplies they need, necessities, right? So that means it's going to be better for what? For you to even get the loads. Here's a question. Uh, people ask me, Alex, why East Coast is not fair? Every time I go to East Coast, especially if I go to New York, I go to New Jersey, and we are talking coming from Midwest, coming from South. So we're talking about coming from the middle of the country to East Coast. And usually on East Coast, prices are way lower. Well, let's think about it. Let's logically understand. Sorry, you guys see my fingers because I want to make sure that I see your comments. So if we are bringing so many things, so let's take New York City, right? We have high population. We have high demand for the products, right? Starting with the food, clothes, all the supplies. but we don't have much space, right? Because when you look at the New York City, right, we have all the high rises, tiny little apartments, so many people living. Can we really build their huge factories? Can we really put in the middle of Central Park a big farm growing cucumbers or pumpkins for Halloween? No, of course not, because we have not, uh, we don't have much of the land because we have such a big, a population that we need to live somewhere, right? So that's why most of the things which are getting manufactured, which are getting um, agric uh, all the agricultural farms, they have to move somewhere, right? So usually if you compare New York City and close by suburbs and you compare it to upstate New York, it's a totally different scenario, right? You go to upstate New York, we right there having what? We have a sweet wine production. We have cranberry picking. We have actually those apples are growing there, right? We have a big dairy production. We have the paper production. We have printing material. Why? Because upstate New York now does not have that big population there. So they have extra land. Then we move into Ohio, right? In depends which city. You concentrate on Columbus. We have a lot of people living. 
you go a little bit further, that's where all the factories are, right? So usually the market is different between, if you look at the Ohio State, we have Toledo market, we have Columbus market, and we have Cincinnati market, totally three different markets. Toledo is right there, starting almost with East Coast. So the tolls, the roads, the traffic, right? Columbus, a lot of people, a lot of manufacturing. So it's great actually for any type of equipment. And then we have Cincinnati, right? Still Ohio. So as a dispatcher, do you really need to know this? Yes, you do. When you guys gonna know the commodities in each state, it's gonna help you with dispatching skills. Why is that? Because it depends on the type of equipment you're gonna know. Should I send my dry van, let's say, to Arkansas, right? Should you or should you not? Well, let's think about Arkansas. What the biggest commodities do we have there? Let's talk. I don't know. Let's 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 see, guys what do you have been learning i hopefully some of my students are watching right if you talk about arkansas and when we talk about certain commodities what are we going to be talking about well we will be talking about soybeans right we're going to be talking about corn we're going to talk about sugar we're going to be talking about some crops right also we have chemicals right what are the biggest distribution centers are there? It's not actually that many, right? Because we're talking about what? Salt, we have some sweet potatoes, electrical machinery, right? And the biggest distribution center is gonna be only Walmart and Target, right? Knowing even the distribution center right here, professional dispatcher is gonna know, well, Walmart, very strict receiver, my driver has to check, can check in an hour early. Almost impossible to reschedule appointment. But if you like me, you can reschedule appointment. Make sure you call exactly that Walmart. You have to press uh, four and then you have to press two to reschedule. You have to give them PO number and try to be sweet, especially in Arkansas. Those ladies, they like, they like when you talk sweet to them. Please, can you help me out? I have this PO number and it's scheduled for tomorrow. Can you please reschedule for today or whatever the day you're looking, right? You need to remember that the dry loads are in the morning. All the frozen loads in every Walmart is going to be afternoon. If that's a produce load, it's going to be in the morning. So knowing shippers, receivers, commodity you can catch is a broker lying to you, right? Then we're talking about Target. Let's talk about Target. Well, most appointments are very strict. Rescheduling is impossible. Loading and unloading takes forever. Why is that? Because usually we bring in freight, freight of all kind. What does it mean? FAK, right? Freight of all kind. When you go to Target, what do you see? You see a bunch of different uh, products, right? So that's what usually dry vans are bringing. They bring in maybe two pallets of the toothpaste. They bring in three pallets of, um, I don't know, baby formula. They bring in some uh, three pallets of cotton uh, swaps. They bring in maybe some detergents. So it's freight of all kind. That's why it takes a long time to unload because they need to break down the pallets. They need to make sure that scan each item and they have to count. And again, who is in charge of that? the lumper service. So do they have to make sure that they do it fast? No, because they get paid per hour, so right? This is a human human kind of nature, taking your time to do your job, because what? If you work a little bit more, you're gonna have that overpay, that extra pay. But does that affect us as a dispatcher? Does it affect our driver? Yes, because we are sitting there waiting to get unloaded. Here's a trick for you for Walmart. Well, make sure when your driver check in, the most Walmarts have an option to fax you BOLs after they count them, after they receive. Make sure he does that, right? So this way, he checks in, they take all the pallets, and they, they're going to be doing counting, they're going to be doing everything, and they will 
email you what PODs, proof of deliveries. Just one thing, make sure that he takes a step from the security check, right? Because you will need to have that page to submit the paperwork. But this will increase your overturn to Walmart probably 50% of the time. In this case, they will unload your trailer within 45 minutes. Paperwork will come when? Maybe an hour later, maybe two hours later. As a dispatcher, what do you have to do? You need to make sure you call the girls in Walmart. You tell them the dock where your truck was. PO delivery. Verify the email and make sure that they send you PODs to your email. So this is a little trick with Walmart. I start utilizing this years and years ago. And believe it or not, my drivers do not sit in Walmart for three, four, five hours. Cannot really do that with Target. That's why here you can tell me, Alex, when you hear that receiver is a Target, do you still take loads? I can tell you this. If I hear that the receiver is Target, Dollar General, McLean, Publix, at Food Lions, I am not taking loads anymore. Doesn't matter how they promise me how fast it's going to be unloading. I do not trust any broker anymore from my personal experience. Those companies really need to improve their unloading, loading, their service. And we in truck in the industry, we do not deserve that because they're holding our trucks for four, five, six, seven hours. It's affecting our hours of service. A lot of times it's uh, making us cancel the next load because as a pro dispatcher, right? I'm teaching you this. If you drive in, you're gonna give two hours load, two hours unload. If you are reefer, always calculate at least three hours load, three hours unload, flatbed, step deck, in the pants, what you have to do to secure the load. If you have tarpon involved, if you have to wait for the crane to come and unload you, well, it's going to take longer. So you need to start writing down those little things, right? And after a while, you will see, even by the states, by the name of the city, you're gonna see, well, they are talking about target. Even if they're not telling you that it's a target, well, you're gonna know that's a target. If they're talking Morris, Illinois, well, it's Costco. Costco is great. I love delivering to Costco 45 minutes in and out time. Doesn't matter if it's a reefer or it's a drive-in, right? Uh, Walmart, as I told you, I'm already utilizing that driver sign in for mail, uh, email PODs. So he gets out two, three hours later, I call, make sure. But usually the, if your driver already knows this, uh, he does it all the time. What did I make? I made sure that they have a card with what? With your company MC, DOT and email so they can sample to that paperwork. Why is it important? Because a lot of times people have the bad handwriting or they uh, misspell your email address. So you guys are gonna sit there and wait for your POD. So make sure you have the cards. Each driver has your cards with your company information, right? But let's go through the market. So why do we need to know them manufacturing and what's going on, right? Well, because we need to know which equipment will do better. Let's talk about, for example, Alabama, right? If we talk about state of Alabama, if we talk about the reefers, well, we have what? We have poultry, right? So poultry, chicken, right? Our chicken, where does it grow? Alabama, Georgia, Arkansas, Louisiana. So this, this is a reefer, reefer commodity. We can have it fresh, we can have it chilled, we can have it frozen. And in my class, we already know the difference between going to what? Uh, processing facility and going to the chicken farm, right? We know that you need to have that three and a quarters of the fuel. You need to make sure your trailer is pre-wash out. You need to make sure that it is pre-cooled, right? If you go into the killing farm, it's going to take you a while because they are not killing, they are not killing the chicken until later. If you go into processing facility, usually you're picking up already the chilled or frozen packaged meat. So that's faster. It usually goes by appointment. But let's talk about driving. What's going on in Alabama? Did you guys know that Alabama actually makes a lot of afterparts? It's a lot of afterparts load and actually a lot of aircraft 
um, parts we are making in Alabama, Birmingham, Alabama, this is an area. So if you know that they have a lot of uh, actually manufacturing there for the outer parts, aren't you going to take your reef, uh, dry vendor? But also then you're getting into bottom of Alabama and we are talking about what? About cotton seeds, right? Well, are you ever going to take cotton seeds as your commodity for your dry van or reefer? Hopefully not. You're not going to take cotton seeds. First of all, they do not pay you. Secondary, they have to blow all the cotton seeds in your dry van or reefer. Then it's the cheapest commodity. Nobody pays for that. You go to upstate Wisconsin or you go to Indiana, you bring in that cotton seed for what? For companies who manufacture something out of this, right? You will need to clean up that uh, reefer and dry van. So does it make sense? So no, it doesn't make sense. So if you have a dry van, do you want to go to south of Alabama or you want to stay close to probably Birmingham, Alabama, where you can pick up those parts? That's why it's so important to learn all those things. Knowing your commodity, knowing your names of what? Of your retails, right? So retails. So retails is what? For example, GC Penny retail store. I don't know Target retail store, Walmart retail store, right? Uh, distribution centers, right? Actually, Wal Walmart is a distribution center who has retail stores. So usually we are delivering exactly to distribution centers, but sometimes we go exactly to the Walmart, right? So do you need to know those names? Yes, you need to know those names. Do you need to understand the commodities and which commodity take or not take? Well, what about, here's a, another column. Uh, because we do white. See, I guys, I'm looking from homework from my, one of my students in this class who already finished. So make sure everybody else finish your homework. Then we're talking about weather and season effects. And some of you telling me, Alex, do you want me to become a weather woman or weather guy? I don't really understand why you want me to understand the seasons and weather. I am only going to be dispatching trucks. Well, here it is. News for you. Every morning, before you're going to post your equipment, before you're going to start looking for those loads, you will be becoming that weather man and weather woman, right, of the day. Because you need to know what's going on in each state. What is the biggest responsibility of the dispatcher? Well, the biggest responsibility of dispatcher is to make sure that the driver is safe on the road. This is your responsibility. It's not about that extra two, three hundred dollars you're gonna book to area where right now is a hurricane coming, or maybe the snowstorm, or maybe it's a heat wave and you taking minus 10 degrees or minus 20 degrees ice cream load, right? Your responsibility to make sure your driver is safe. Your responsibility is make sure that you do not take commodities which can bring claims to your carriers so let's even talk about for example now is a summertime most of you who are working with what with produce you have to pick between some type of produce if i have to pick between cabbage watermelon and cherries what would i pick let me see if somebody's going to answer cherry is paying Let's say $7,000, same distance, watermelons are paying $6,200, and peppers are paying $6,000. What would we pick? Let's see if somebody's going to pick uh, your choice of commodities. I, don't see, I do not see anybody's answering. So we have three commodities. Pick one, $7,000 for cherries coming from Washington to New Jersey. Seven, seven thousand, let's say, coming for watermelons from Colorado to New Jersey. Let's, let's say that it's the same kind of miles, right? And then we have green peppers also coming from Nogales, Arizona, also going to East Coast. So some of you pick peppers, some of you pick um, watermelons. 
and some of you peppers again how come seven thousand dollars it was the most paying load for the same kind of distance so the rate per mile would be what rate per mile would be higher so you probably going to make extra money so we've seen some answers watermelons watermelons peppers here it is if you are a professional dispatcher you will pick peppers why let's think about this cherries spoil really fast cherries have to be picked they have to be cooled if you even go to the store how easy it is they have to be packaged in the plastic right you go to the store how easy it is to find a good cherries which are still kind of in a good condition well it's not that easy that means that shipper or, or whoever picks them up they had to properly properly cool them down before they put it on your truck how often does it happen well it doesn't happen that often so if your driver did not do two main things he has to do dealing with the produce first he needs to pulp those cherries right not in only one pallet but in three pulp that means to check on the temperature exactly of the cherries p-u-l-p make sure you give your reefer driver present the laser thermometer right first he needs to make sure that they all pre-cooled so usually cherries are 33 to 34 degrees right you go from washington you go all the way to east coast let's say we all go into york pa right well seven thousand dollars seven miles so you make an extra money well the cherries spoils faster than pepper and watermelon let's talk about watermelons same situation bigger fruit right so the watermelons fruit let's say you also need to pulp the temperature of watermelons if they were not pre pulled let's say they were coming from mexico they were not actually pre-chilled they put it on your truck do you think that big huge fruit can actually adjust the temperature and watermelons are about 50 to 52 degrees but when they put them hot usually at 80 90 you drive they are not gonna go down so you come to walmart distribution center you come to the market and they reject your load due to what due to your watermelon being too hot right due to your cherries are not a good quality so in this case peppers is a winning combination right because peppers don't spoil that fast right and it's easier to monitor them so in this case in this case whoever said the peppers are the winners but did i prove to you that simply understanding commodities and liabilities that's what you can help your carriers to prevent those claims right so in this case whoever took the peppers probably 95 percent unless your reefer is going to break down you're not going to have a problem watermelons is going to be my second choice and cherries are going to be my last choice even though they were paying thousand dollars more that thousand dollars mean nothing when you're going to have rejected seven eight pallets or all load of cherries plus here's a trick how much does pepper cost well they don't cost as much as those cherries so the value of the load we put in the same 22 pallets of the peppers probably what total value maybe twenty five thousand. we put in the watermelons in the pants where they come from what time of the year we're talking about 35 to forty five thousand. we put in the cherries on the same truck same 22 pallets and the value of that load goes almost 200,000 and if we are talking if we are talking about rain cherries those yellow cherries a lot of times it's more than 100,000 that's why you're going to see in comments the commodity is rain cherries you need a coverage for at least 150,000 so as a pro dispatcher isn't it right there is a red sign do i want to risk my carrier's future growth just because i am choosing cherries no you're not because i'm teaching you how to become a pro so 
knowing your commodities, knowing your regions, it's going to help you to prevent to go the areas which don't have anything, right? And we have a lot of those areas because USA is a huge country, right? USA has a lots and lots of areas where we don't have much population, where production or manufacturing is not really booming, right? And we're talking about sometimes because of economic, remember? Years and years ago when I came in 99, oh my God, Detroit, it was a huge production, right? But then we have what? Then we have the car making market going down and Detroit become what? A host city. So market switches all the time. Right now, what's going on right now? Let's see in California and Texas, what's going on? Texas is going to get stronger and stronger and stronger with what? With having manufacturing, with having more agricultural uh, uh, stuff going on in production. Why? Because California's law are kicking everybody out. Tesla is moving, Apple is moving, other companies are moving because of what? Because of high taxes. So what does it mean for taxes? It means that they're going to have extra product they are making inside of the state. That means that market is going to be stronger going to taxes and getting out of the taxes, right? So that's why even a lot of people who are in trucking, they are actually, they are actually moving right now to taxes because they want to be part of that growth. Again, if we are having population moving there, we have people who relocate, we have company who's relocating, what's happening? Well, housing market goes up, but for housing market goes up, we are building extra houses. That means that we are bringing more building supplies, right? We are actually bringing a lot of stuff with what? Step decks, flat decks, right? Because we are building the cities. The big, one of the biggest cities which uh, rapidly growing is in Texas, right? Austin, Dallas, they grow, they grow fast. Why? Because population is increasing so simply knowing supply and demand between population simply knowing supply and demand between loads available and capacity of the truck simply knowing data this is a single basic data how are we gonna now we're gonna talk about well market is doing bad but why should I worry about all of this knowledge when I should just concentrate how to make that phone call? Well, because we are talking about you being a pro in the long run, right? Market goes up and down, but the statistics of all of those things are not really changing or they are switching some states to a better freight movement states or they actually change them to the worst. So that's why you guys need to make sure you understand this, right? So let's see if we have any questions because today it's just extra session. How to know the markets in USA? What do you need to concentrate? When people ask me, Alex, you give this homework and of course I'm giving the previous uh, students uh, data, their PDFs, their hard work and you ask me, how can I find this? Well, we can go to what? We can get, go to the labor statistics in each state, right? To know the population, to know the companies, how many companies in each state, how many manufacturers do we have, right? We can go to what? To our agriculture data, right? We also have statistics. We can go to the export for commodities. I actually give you a few links to exports of commodities in each state. So by analyzing it, you guys can learn a lot of things. So by the end of the class, it should not be even a big deal knowing, well, where, where do we grow peanuts, right? Where is all the soy oil comes from? Which state? Where is the chicken? Oh, well, where is the state comes? Most of the states comes here. Oh, what is in Utah? Should I ever go to Wyoming? Or should I take the load to Montana? Or maybe I should avoid it. Maybe I should just go to Montana when I'm going to Oregon or Washington, right? Or if I do, I need to make sure I have a backhaul, right? So all of that things are going to start making sense to you when you're going to be dispatching. So if you have any questions, I will answer. And let's see. 
This is the stuff I'm learning. Thank you so much. Love your videos. Thank you. Thank you so much. Love from Nibir. Okay. Let's see. Hello, Alex. I thought you on vacation. Hopefully you have a good time on vacation. You know me, Sanad. I'm a, work a workaholic. I'm so used to being busy. That's after two, three days of just relaxing, swimming, eating, and drinking. I just like, I need to do something. Plus, a lot of students today were calling me and texting in the morning. Don't we have a class today? Like, no, we don't have a class. But uh, I decide just to go and remind you that whoever is in May class have to make sure homework by next Saturday. So this is homework on the markets, on production and everything else. Everybody who sign up for June class, you already got your first part of the homework. You got Z0, Z1, Z2. You also got Z3 and Z4. Next week when I'm back, you guys are going to receive extra zone. So make sure you working on it okay what else oh, what is the llc well this is a, a structure of your business right we can have llc we can have corporation we can have partnership so this is the structures of business in usa you can choose from in depends in depends how you're gonna plan your company you can choose that structure and again, in the pants on the state, you can decide if you want to go LLC or if you want to go corporation. If you go corporation, it can be C corporation, S corporation. If you guys go in partnership, make sure you kind of waive your uh, risk in here. Maybe you should save your partner for an extra MC in the future. Thank you so much. I learned so much from you thank you and look at this marta is a member guys um we appreciate our members as many of you know you can become member and you can actually give thanks to our videos if you find them informative if you are learning something because of the people like marta we have our subscribers it's only four dollars a month it's like three dollars 99 cents but marta probably been uh, watching us we are giving the free education for people who kind of uh, cannot afford it or people who have challenges in their life. So we're helping them. And of course, every three months, we are giving free classes back to our members. So hopefully, Marta is going to be the winner in our June class, right? In a few weeks, we're going to have drawing. So thank you so much for supporting our channel and I do believe when you give something, you will receive even more. So thank you so much. Um, what else we have? Other states? Okay. Are there any states you don't go? Well, again, there's a state which don't really have many people who live there. So let's think about it. What about North Dakota? What about Montana? What about Wyoming, right? Even New Mexico. When you really look at the map, first you see that the cities are spread out and the population is very low. So if the population is low, who is going to be working on those imaginary manufacturing production plants? Everything? They don't even have them there. So yes, I call them never go to state unless... Unless you have a driver who lives there and he has to go home. Or unless you trying to play a casino. You hope for reload. Or if you really have broker who has reload. Let's say you take the load from Dallas and you go somewhere to Billings, Montana. But he's telling you, well, I also have reload from Billings, Montana. Hopefully, maybe go at least to Minneapolis. If you do have backhaul from the bad area, you can go there. But a lot of good brokers, they will trick you, right? They will promise you, oh, you know what? I might have loads there. Why don't you go to New Mexico, Albuquerque, New Mexico, or go to Cheyenne, Wyoming, or go to North Dakota or Montana? I will have loads for you. And you being new or being naive, you're going to like, okay, I'm going to go there. He's paying me kind of good money, a little bit more than go to good area, right? So you're like, okay, I'm going there. 
And then in two days of your transit, you calling back that Mike from TKL and like, Mike, so let's talk about uh, reload. And Mike's like, oh, you know what? No, that load was canceled. You know, oh, it was moved to the next week for the next month. Why? Because he's a good salesperson. He needs to sell the load for you. So he is promising you. So in that case, the only thing you can do is he can give you two loads right away. Before I'm going to send my driver to get loaded to the load to nowhere, I will make sure I call that second load first. I will verify with the shipper and receiver on the second load that actually that load is existing. So please make sure you do not fall for that. Then we also have the states, which are challenging. How many of you live in, in a sunny Florida, right? Most of you love the weather, the palm trees, the entertainment. Well, the Florida is a very challenging state, right? From 12 months, that state is no <laughs> product state for like nine months. So we do have very short time in Florida where we have some loads due to what? Due to some holidays like flowers before Valentine's Day, flowers for Mother's Day. Then we have a few shipments maybe for, say, uh, for Thanksgiving and produce. So produce is starting about right now and going to go to, what, six, eight weeks. It depends on the weather. Besides that, every time you go to Florida, you do need to pre-book. And going to Florida, you'd better make sure that your load going to Florida is going to compensate on that cheap load from Florida. A lot of times when people go all the way to Miami, they are sitting there trying to find the load the same day or even per book. Here, take my advice. Start deadheading. Go to Jacksonville. You'd better deadhead empty because you spend less fuel because you're not heavy and you're going to save that extra day in transit. So for most of the people who live there, it's a challenging to get out, right? So that's why a lot of drivers from Florida having that hard time. For me, when we had a lot of drivers actually from Florida, we used to do the maintenance for our trucks in Chicago and just buy them the tickets. They would fly to Florida, to Jacksonville, to Orlando and come back in six, five days. So they would be on the road for three weeks, go home, maybe even for seven days. It was better for me as for the company owner than sending truck to the Florida when they are not even paying to go to Florida and dead heading back with having the cheap load because for driver it doesn't matter you pay him per mile but for you as the owner of the company actually it was killing you at some point we had like eight or ten drivers from Miami area unfortunately had to make sure I just left the ones who will, were willing to fly. Other uh, other ones, I had to let it go just because it was not making sense for me. You know, I'm not a charity business. I do need to make money in trucking. So had to make sure I changed that game. Okay. Class in June. Um, I'll see you in June. Cannot wait. Thank you, Katerina. I do believe I did forward you some emails. It was actually challenging for me to do it on just iPad, but you will receive all extras next week. And class in June. Yes, our class in June starting June 19th. Guys, we don't have many spots available, so if you're still looking for signing up in June, it is Sunday class. A lot of people complain, why is it Sunday class? Again, guys, I try to please everybody. We had people who cannot do Saturdays because of some uh, extra work. A lot of people do have two jobs, so they work on Saturdays. And we had people who had some certain religion beliefs they could not do Saturdays. So that's why twice a year I do Sunday classes. If you're really looking for only Saturday class, we already have our schedule for August. You can sign up now and you can start you can start studying hello from iraq hi how are you so let's talk outsourcing right can you be a dispatcher if you outside of the country yes outsourcing in big especially in dispatching in now when the market goes down a lot of companies gonna be looking for dispatcher outside of the country simply because they will be paying less 
if you outside of the country, you do need to spend more time in learning map, highways, seasons, weather, equipment. You do need to know what grows in USA. You need to know the even the size of the pallets, right? What does it mean? You need to know terminology, palletized, not palletized, floor loaded. You need to know the traffic. So yes, you can dispatch from anywhere, but you need to understand USA. You want to succeed? You have to watch what? traffic you have to use some apps weather apps you need to know all the details about the big cities right what's going on about the uh, crossing from mexico which cities do we use you have to uh, understand what if you're going through canada you need to see what are the tolls what does it mean to go on 76 on 80 so a lot of things for you as an outside dispatcher you will need to improve and learn so we do have a lot of students from outside the country. We do have a lot of dispatch services who are outsourcing and actually building a big business uh, outside of the country. Again, um, does this benefit USA Care? Um, a lot of times, if you really, if you really learn your things, look at me. Well, of course, um, yeah, I might have accent, right? Somebody was asking me. If I was a Russian, no, I'm not a Russian. I'm 100% Ukrainian. So, but I've been living here for 23 years. So of course, I do have accent. It's something which you have to work probably for the rest of your life. And of course, I do still make mistakes in English. English is not my first language, especially when you go live or when you're teaching. So please forgive me. But hopefully you guys mostly understand, right, what I'm trying to say. And... Um, it was challenging. I was in this country already for 15 years before I got into logistics, right? Before I got into the freight. I was doing real estate. I was doing physical therapy offices. So I always had a business going on. But when I got to trucking, even me, I had no clue where mangoes come from, where is watermelons. I did not even know. Oh, my God, we have watermelons in the south part of Illinois? We actually shipping pumpkins from New Mexico. We have most of the pumpkins coming from Michigan. Oh, the sweet wine, it doesn't really come from Oregon, but it's also come from upstate New York. So a lot of things I had to learn, although I was living here. Yeah, I knew the traffic in Chicago. I knew the traffic in New York. I knew the traffic in Los Angeles, the cities that I travel for vacation. But did I have a clue, for example, of the speed limit? in uh, um, taxes did i know that challenges of going and picking up in the ports in philadelphia no i did not know that and actually it took me a while to finally understand that those are the most important thing posting the truck learning about equipment that's it's something which you can do in few weeks but actually putting the data together analyzing it, and talking to your drivers and drivers will help you out Drivers who've been driving around, you should ask them, well, can you tell me about the shipper and the receiver? How was the parking? Uh, did they let you sleep there? How are they were friendly? And next time you make a comment, make a comment, make a comment. And then you kind of analyze and you kind of start remembering this, right? So, you know, well, I'm not going to the shipper because it's hard to back up there. I'm not going to be taking chance of... Um, of damaging the equipment for my carrier because what he's gonna lose thousands and thousands of uh, of um, dollars then we might damage the cargo so no i'm not going to boston uh downtown of boston i'm not delivering in downtown of chicago you know what i am gonna skip going to atlanta between 12 and 4 p.m i'd better pick up maybe close to atlanta maybe i'll go outside of atlanta right I am not going to go all the way to Miami because it's no load there. So maybe I'll just take my loads to Tampa. Maybe I'll just go to the Lake City, Florida. Maybe I am going to make that line and I'm not going to go further than Orlando, right? It takes time. But after a while, you guys going to put all of this together. Uh, I just want to tell you that you're a great person. Oh, thank you so much. 
how often do you experience tonus? Well, how often do I experience tonus? Uh, usually not that often, but again, because of the market switch, a lot of brokers now, they are canceling on you, right? They are canceling last minute. Um, for me, probably tonal, I don't know, maybe I'll get one or two per month per driver. So not, not really often, not, maybe not even that. Maybe truck order not used uh, once a month. So what is she talking about? Truck order not used. So let's say that Cherry, she booked the load. Uh, and her her driver start driving there or maybe he already got to a shipper and the product is not ready or maybe he did not even start going there maybe he's still in process and the broker said and said you know what uh, product is not going to be ready this load was canceled it was pushed for tomorrow they can give you two options if you want to wait till tomorrow we'll give you layover which is going to be also 150 dollars or we're going to give you tonal. So usually it's like $150, but it's a big difference. Can you justify $150 if you already dead had it? Let's say the pickup was at 4 p.m. You unloaded at 12 and you had dead had 60 miles. Your truck is already dead had it. Right now it's three o'clock. You are almost to pick up. You dead had it. And now they call you and say, well, it's canceled. We're going to just give you $150. $50. Well, it's not fair. So if your driver was on micro tracking and you already talking about cancellation afternoon, what can you find at 3, 4 p.m. in this market? Nothing. So that means that you're losing the full day uh, of profits, right? And right now with this market, we're talking what? The drive-in should make approximately from 800 to 1200 a day. Reefer should make from 1000 to 1700 a day and flatbed step deck from right now it's a higher market for flatbed step deck again why because of the season because every, everybody is building houses we are building streets so the flatbed market and step deck is higher so they are making from 1500 to 2000 so let's say you drive in so you lost a day of profit of let's say $1000 and they are giving you $150 okay can it be justified? No, it cannot. So you as a dispatch, you do need to negotiate that. You, uh, you have to validate this. You're like, well, we dead had it. Look at the cost of the fuel. I wasted my time. Now we are at, unfortunately, how is it going to be possible to be for my reload? At least, at least you have to give me 250, 300 loads, uh, $300, right? So that's tone. Let's say she booked the load yesterday and it's 7 a.m. or 8 a.m. Her load does not become till 3 p.m. Her broker is emailing or calling her and telling, well, Sherry, you know what? It was canceled. And he does it right away in the morning. Your truck is not even unloaded yet. He was not dispatched. So will you get that tonal? No, unfortunately, unless you know the broker, unless you've been working for a long time, unless uh, he's a really good person, he will pay you tonal. But usually, you're not going to get tonal, okay? So any gear to our self-dispatch owner operators or no any resource? Well, any class, well, <laughs> any dispatch class, it's for whom? for people who want to become dispatchers, for people who want to build dispatch service and hire people, for owner of the companies who at least need to know how dispatch works, and of course, for owner operators. We have a lot of owner operators who take these classes because you guys know one side of the business. You know the equipment, you might know shippers, receivers, but what do you need to improve? You need to know the paperwork process, you need to know negotiation, you need to look at this at a bigger picture. So actually, this is a great class. Our dispatch class is actually um, is towards that independent dispatch, but mostly also for owner operators, right? Okay. Um, red colors. Okay, you look gorgeous with your pleasant holiday. It's a compliment from the. Thank you so much. And of course, we do have Memorial Weekend. First of all, let's be thankful for all the men and women who always protect our freedom, okay? From the bottom of my heart, we, 
we lose a lot of lives every year to protect our country. And most of you know how important it's to have freedom. Some of you can sit here and tell, well, the USA is changing, but still it's one of the best countries in the world and we do have freedom. So let's be thankful for that. But here is the challenges. Memorial weekend. You are dispatcher now. You are driver. What do you need to make sure you pay attention? Remember, most of the uh, shippers, receivers had a short hours on Friday. Most of them who even work on Saturday, they were closed due to holiday. Some of them will be closed on Monday. So now as a dispatcher, besides knowing the market, besides knowing the tolls, besides knowing the seasons, don't you need to know the USA holidays and making sure that you double check on the hours of each shipper and receiver during certain holidays. So right now we on Memorial weekend, right? Hopefully you guys did your uh, job as a dispatcher. And before you dad had it or went to pick up that load, you made that phone call, right? From your rate confirmation. And you double check that that Walmart is going to be receiving, that that Costco is still going to be receiving, that that Kroger is still working, that that little farm is still going to be shipping or receiving. This was your job. This is not driver's job. This is your job. Before holidays, you're going to spend that extra time to verify information. You will never, ever trust broker because brokers are trying to sell the load. Because sometimes it's easier for them to give you that extra layover for $150 because they promise you that you're going to deliver on Memorial Week and on Sunday. You even found the load from another broker, which has to pick up because we still have facilities. We still work 24-7, even due to holidays. And now your driver is going to check in tomorrow or probably check in today. And facility is closed due to Memorial Weekend. Are you going to blame broker that you trusted him? Well, you could. You can get pissed. Your driver get pissed. But if you're going to start doing your job, you're not going to be going to this problem. Um have one month working and learning the art of dispatch. I'm impressed with this job. Yes, Javier. And to do this job, to do this job, that's what you need to do. You have to love what you're doing. If you really love what you're doing, if you're improving and you actually learning something every day, you will be a great dispatcher. When people come to this just because everybody tells them, oh, you're going to make this money and you're going to concentrate on their a percentage you're going to charge carrier and you could just, just sit home and work from home. This is a different mindset. If you really love what you do and you actually buy your skills, if you making carrier money, you're going to love being dispatcher and you will be appreciated and nobody's going to have problem paying you a 10% and even more when you really preventing that cargo claims, making sure the drivers are safe and you're still making them profit, right? Even sometimes when breakdowns happen, if you're there to help them, to find the dealer, to find, to find a better solution, believe me, they're going to love you. They're going to love you. Um, what else? Thank you for the gems you dropped to help with being efficient. I love your accent. I could listen to you all day. Well, we have, we have uh, you know, different opinions. Some people uh, texted me like, you should not be teaching because your accent is very harsh. I don't understand what, you, what you're trying to say. Well, I can tell you this. I'm trying my best. And if you have a hard time understanding me, you also going to have a hard time of understanding 80% of brokers, uh, tracking, tracking uh, um, services, dispatch services, because in this industry, we have people from different uh, countries, different languages, different nationalities. So you need to train your ear. And if you have problem and you complain, well, probably dispatching is not for you. So tolerance, loyalty, actually some respect and you can always ask alex what the hell did you mean by saying that right well and i can explain to you in english or other language right so thank you for the info and time with madness for the holidays 
Okay, do we have insurance agency? Yes, we do, but we only cover in with uh, Illinois, Wisconsin, in Indiana. What uh, what the dispatcher should have to start dispatching? Why, because she or she has to have LLC or something like that. Well, guys, you've been watching a lot of my videos. Again, your business a business structure can be different. It doesn't have to be just LLC. It's up to you and your accountant what they advise for you. Everybody's situation is different. You should ask CPA what is best for you. Most of you listen to LLC, LLC, LLC. Believe me, this is not the best solution to start this pet service because why do you want to pay more taxes? LLC kind of protect you more, but you also have double taxation. So why don't you go and Google business structures in USA pluses and minuses of taxation for LLC, for partnership, for S corporation, for C corporation. Um, Thanks, Alex. Thank you so much. Currently signed, but soon enters the real battlefield. Uh, wash hands, wash hands. Okay. The only way to do the great work is to love what you do. Agree. Currently studying, but soon will be entering battlefield. I am excited to start this process, but it's scary at the same time. I enjoy this patch and I'm going to look into your June class. Please do so, but is it scary? Well, you actually, that
Wow, I think it was a bad connection, huh, guys? I don't know if you are still here. Maybe somebody kidnapped me. No, nobody kidnapped me, right? So I guess it was a bad connection. Uh, I was answering. So where did she go? She was about to come in the night. Well, it's scary. Can it be scary? Well, anything in life can be scary, right, guys? But um, that means that you're a responsible person, right? You're scared because you know that you're going to have kind of liability to making sure that those cares depend on your skills, right? Because you will be making them profits. So is it fair to come to this industry without knowledge? Is it fair to try to figure it out on somebody's company? No, it's not fair. Unless this is your husband, this is your truck, and you guys want to try to play that game, right? So if you guys want to try to play that game, uh, well, it's up to you. But if you are dispatcher who is trying to get in, into this market, right, and who wants to make sure that you stay and people actually will be hiring for the services it's not an around of being scared but why are you scared because you still new to this right you need to make your first few mistakes and mistakes are gonna come no matter what right it doesn't matter if you come or wanda or love renting you all guys gonna make mistakes to become a pro dispatcher it's gonna take you not one month it's gonna take you not two months it's going to take you a full year. Why I am talking about the full year? Well, because you need to relieve all the holidays, all the seasons, all the challenges, right? Up and downs of the market. So being scared is a natural thing when you go into new things. But being scared and being ignorant and unprepared are two different things. Being scared because it's new, but you are investing in your knowledge, you're learning, you're studying, you're signing up for classes, or you're learning from YouTube channels, or you're learning on your own. This is this is okay sc being scared, right? So you're going to get over it. The confidence is going to come after a week or two. The moment you're going to book your first load, the confidence is going to be there. You don't have to be scared. You will be honest with your driver and you're going to tell them, well, I am newer to this, so I need your help. I need you to help me out maybe with hours of service. I need you to help me out with some shippers receivers. But again, when you're asking him about some things, don't you need to already know? What does it mean hours of service? Don't you need to know the rules? What does it mean ELD? What does it mean restart? What is a shift? Don't you need to know the difference between equipment what is a wanted win? What is a what is a heated win? What is the enclosed win? What is a palletized product? What is a floor loaded? What is a bulk product? So terminology already has to be there. Principles of logistics, knowing who is a broker, who is a third party logistics, who are you? What is your responsibility? It has to be there already. That's why I am very strong on basics. That's why we do these classes, because you need to have foundation to come to this industry. I do not believe that any carrier deserves somebody to come and, and actually uh, learn all the mistakes on their profitability. This is not fair. So you need to make sure you at least learn that terminology, paperwork process, how to set up a carrier with the brokers, the terminology for setup, what is the factory, what is the equipment, what is the empty scale ticket, what do we need to know as a dispatcher, how to ask questions, which order to ask questions. And then it's going to be natural. Of course, yes, you're going to be shaking the first phone call. Yes, they're going to hang up on you. Yes, you might not to uh ask for enough money maybe you're gonna lowball them it all comes with experience but if you do the steps if you're gonna see well i posted the truck chicago to memphis before i called i was checking the credit of this broker well they approved by my factory did you do your job yes secondary you check quick, uh, check quick rate search well everybody's paying this then exactly how they pay for the same for the same day did you do that before you start dialing? Yes, you did. Do you know your equipment? Yes, you do. So after two, three phone calls, 
you're not going to be scared anymore, right? It's going to be your second nature. Okay, hopefully the life will resume. Yes, it resumed. So sorry for that um, inconvenience I got again. You need to have a good connection if you are traveling and doing this job. I am licensed agent in North Carolina, but I am really considering getting into dispatching as well. Well, I'm also insurance agent. You know, I do, I do real estate as well. So I am life producer, uh, insurance agent, real estate agent. I had physical therapy license before, even was working in hospitals with ultrasound. I was Acotech. So I have a lot of different hats. Okay, I love blessing, excellent teaching. So I think we're gonna be done for today because it's already went to one hour, 20 minutes. Hopefully you guys gonna forgive me, forgive me about that kind of misfortune disconnection. And I'll see you soon in my classes. I'll see all my students on Wednesday for a little um, extra hour, hour and a half class. And we'll see everybody in June. Love you all. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you go to our website, right? Our next class starts on June 19th. And of course, remember to become a member. I love you guys and see you soon. Changing, standing in the street